Sounds like you're looking for a tutorial on the Scratch 3 Sound Editor. Well listen up, because in this Scratch 3 Sounds tutorial, we'll explore the Sound Editor and its tools together. We'll check out the YouTube audio library so that we can upload a sound, and we'll suss out the code blocks. All this, coming up. Hello world, Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer programmer bringing you the goodness of learning to code through video tutorials. If that sounds like something that you're into, consider hitting that subscribe button. Hit that show more button down below to check out a bunch of links that relate to this video tutorial. You can find a link to my funky tee here, this is Mount LP, which you can find on Redbubble. If you suss out the link down below and purchase it, you'll be supporting this channel. But hey, let's go rock out those sound blocks. All right, we're in the Scratch Project Editor. I've just set up a basic animation that is based on the loudness reporter block. If the loudness is over a reading of 40, remember that's just the microphone, I just play this little speaker animation here. We're gonna be sussing out these magenta colored sound blocks, but first we're gonna jump over into the Scratch Sound Editor, which you can find by pressing the Sounds tab here. When you start a new project, you've usually got the Scratch Cat and usually you'll have this meow sound. To hear that sound, all you need to do is press the play button. You can find more sounds in the Scratch Sound Library. To do that, just mouse over this sort of speaker button or the magnifying glass and you can choose a sound. You're prompted with this dialog box. Now, if you mouse over these purple buttons with the play button, it'll play that sound. You've got all these categories here to choose from. I kind of like the loops, the effects, and these wacky sounds here. All right, so if you want to choose that sound, all you need to do is click it and it will now come up just like a costume would in your sprite. You've got some filters that you can apply to that sound, so you can make it faster, or you can make it slower. You can also make it louder and softer. There's this mute button. If you press it, you'll see the sound goes away. I haven't found an unmute button, so what I do is I just press the undo button. Too. You can fade in the sound, which doesn't really have a great effect there. You can also fade out the sound. Just gonna undo those two. You can reverse the sound, and you can also apply a robot sound. You couldn't really hear that robot filter, so let's go ahead and make a recording. Head over to the sound button, press the record button here, which is that little microphone. You're prompted with the dialog box, and you'll see here you've got an indicator of the microphone volume. You can go ahead and press the record button. Here I am recording my voice. What Scratch does is it suggests some edits for you. So it's gonna chop off the end bit and this little start bit. I reckon it should chop off a little bit more right up until I start talking, which is about there. We can play it. Here I am recording my voice. If you're happy with that, press save. If not, press the re-record button. We're happy with that. Cool. Let's go ahead and apply that robot filter to it now. Here I am recording my voice. There we go, much better. We can let Scratch choose a sound for us by pressing this surprise button. It will just give us a random effect. <laughs> The last option we have in our sound button here is to upload a sound. What I'm going to show you now is something that you may or may not be aware of. I'm here in the YouTube audio library. I've got a link down in the description below if you want to go check that out. And this is like our Scratch sound library, except it has a few more sounds at our disposal. We've got all these tracks here, and we've also got some sound effects. We've also got all these flags that we can filter by, and one of the key ones is this attribution not required. It means that you can just use these sounds in your projects and videos. Pretty neat. I've gone ahead and downloaded this Cubic Z one and we'll be using it in our Scratch project. All right, let's give our song a little play. We've got this nice little intro section to our song before it skips into the song proper. All right, we're just gonna leave our song there because I wanna go ahead and explore some of these options up here. You can use your mouse to identify sections or select sections of your song. So say that you really enjoy the intro to that song, you can go ahead and select that range. Now you can press play, I won't, I'll spare you the experience of listening to it again. You can go ahead and copy that to a new sound file. So now what we have is that intro section, but I've got a feeling that we got the little bit on the end there. So let's go and play that. We did, so what we can do is reduce that section and we can delete it off. So we've just got that intro section in there now. And we can rename that to intro section. Cool. I really like the part where it transitions from the intro into the main part of the song. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And I reckon I might put that on the end of the meow. And what I can do is press the paste button there. And you'll, if we listen to our meow sound now. All right, so I think there's a little bit of a delay there that we can get rid of. So we'll delete that. And now let's listen to that. 
beautiful and horrific at the same time. We're gonna leave the Scratch Sound Editor now and jump over into the code to explore all these sound blocks. The first two blocks in our sound category are these two stack blocks, play sound until done and start sound. So there's a subtle difference between these two, but they're kind of similar. So play sound until done, what that does is it will play the currently selected sound and it will stop all the other scripts until it is finished playing. So let's go get that ricochet sound. If we play it, that's cool. Now, if we've got this meow sound as well, what this will do is it will start the sound directly and it will execute the next block straight away as well. I'm gonna play the ricochet sound until done. Cool, so you'll notice there that the ricochet sound played and after it finished, we started the meow sound. What we can do is reverse the order of this. We'll start that meow sound and then you might be able to hear the ricochet and you may not. So that was pretty hard to hear. We could go ahead and get that recording of me. That might be a little bit easier. I am recording my voice. So you can see there that this sound immediately started playing after this sound started to play. So that's the subtle difference between these two blocks. All right, let's go check out these next app blocks. I'm just gonna drag them all out onto the stage just so we can see what they all do. Okay, so we're gonna be playing that Cubic Z sound until done and we're just gonna go through and see what the effects sound like when we're doing that. So if I play the sound, sound that we know, we can stop the sound by pressing this stop all sounds block. And what that does, that will stop every single sound throughout your Scratch project. So use with caution. Let's go ahead and play our sound again. And now I'm gonna adjust the pitch. I'm gonna keep pressing this and have a listen to what happens. Okay, so when we changed that pitch by 10, it was getting higher. Let's go and subtract the value now. Cool. So you can see that when we lower the pitch, it gets a lot deeper. Okay, let's go check out the pan left or right. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate this one for you because I don't have two speakers, but what this would do is it will change or shift towards the output track. So if we increase it by 10, it will shift towards the right track. And if we decrease it by 10, it'll shift it towards the left track. So if you've got two speakers, you'll be able to hear the difference between these two. You can also go ahead and set the effect value explicitly by using this set stack block for these two effects. You can also use the clear sound effects to reset it all again. These last three blocks refer to the volume output for this sprite. I'm just gonna go ahead and tick the volume flag so you can go see what the output level for this sprite is. It's 100. We can go ahead and play that sound. And we can go ahead and change the volume by 10. And if we go all the way down to zero, that means that sound is now muted. We can increase the sound, of course, by 10. And we can set it to a specific value. So back to 100. Those with a keen eye would have seen this little music category down here. Now, there were some extra features in Scratch 2 that have been removed just to simplify it a little bit. You can go find this extension by clicking the extensions and clicking on this music extension down here. I'm not gonna go through these in this tutorial, but I'll link to a future video using the card in the top corner. It's time for a scratchy question, and I wanna know if you've got an awesome place where you get your sound effects and your audio loops. Share a link in the comments section below if you've got one. Hey, thanks for checking out this Scratch 3 Sound Editor tutorial, and thanks to Vecdeasy for the speaker graphic. Like, subscribe, ring the bell if you're new around here, and have a scout of some of my other content on your screen right now. You can show your support for Surfing Scratcher by checking out links to my Patreon page for these funky tees, or by joining the mailing list, all links below in the description. But until then, I'm off to go find a wave, catch you in the next one.